Hello my dreamers, I am Maya Joy. Welcome to my video on the seventh house. Thank you to all of you who voted in yesterday's poll and chose this video. Here's what we're going to be doing in today's video. We're going to be talking a little bit about the astrological houses, how to find the sign ruling your seventh house, and then we're going to talk a little bit about some of the general meanings of the seventh house in astrology, why it's important, and then we are going to deep dive into the more sort of nuanced understanding of the seventh house, some of the deeper meanings, how we can use our knowledge of the seventh house to heal ourselves. And then in the second half of the video, I'm going to be covering all of the signs on the seventh house, first house axis. If you're interested in guidance specific to your seventh house sign, I will leave timestamps below and you can jump to the signs that you'll see ruling that your personal seventh house, first house access. So what the heck am I talking about? If you're really new to astrology and you don't really understand what the houses are, here's the basic rundown. When you generate your chart and your astrological chart, your natal chart, it should look like a wheel, almost like a clock. And there are 12 numbers on it, one through 12. Each of the 12 numbers corresponds to a different aspect of your psychology or your identity and you can learn a ton if you're able to sort of know the meaning of each house and then assign the values of the sign that rules that house to those house matters. You can know so much about yourself or somebody else if you're studying their chart. Some of you may know that there are many, many house systems in astrology. Unfortunately, I wish it wasn't the case. I wish there was only one. I recommend using the whole sign house system to generate your chart. It's gonna be the easiest and most straightforward. That is the system that I use and I invite you all to use it. If you don't know how to generate your chart in the whole sign house system, I will leave below a link to a video that I made on generating your north node in the whole sign house system and it will also work to generate your entire natal chart. Um, or if you would still like to watch this video, but you use the Placidus system or you use the Equal House system or any other house system, then think of the sign of your descendant when we are covering the topics of this video. Hopefully you have your chart in hand. If you do, you want to look for the little symbol that corresponds to the slice of your chart that says seven. And I'll show my chart here as an example. So if you look for the symbol there, you'll see it's the little symbol of Pisces. Here are the glyphs for all of the different signs. So you can just take a look real quick and see which of these symbols is lined up with your seventh house. That will be your seventh house sign. And like I said, in part two of this video, you'll be able to get guidance specific to that sign. In order to understand the seventh house of your chart, it's helpful to compare it to the house that lies opposite to it, which is actually the first house. So in astrology, the first house corresponds to sort of when we are born into the world, when we're babies, and it's like that initial formation of our identity, which is often highly influenced by our parents, our upbringing, our family. It's for who we first learn that we are. The first house is the house of I am, right? And really typically like houses one through six in your astrology correspond to aspects related to your sort of individual identity. Whereas houses seven through 12 have to do more with your relationship to the world and your relationships with others. The seventh house is opposite to the first house. So if we think of the first house as being the house of your identity, the I am house, then the seventh house in your astrology is the we are house. The seventh house 
is typically affiliated with marriage. Like most astrologers will say, oh, this is your house of marriage, you know? And if you've got something there, it means that you're gonna get married. And if you don't have anything there, then it means that you might not get married, okay? So some astrologers would say that. That's a basic way of understanding it. I would say that really your seventh house is more about the qualities and characteristics of those with whom you will engage in partnerships and one-on-one -on -one relationships, especially contractual relationships. So I know a lot of you are here because like you love soul connections, soulmates, twin flames, all of that. Now this is my personal opinion, but I would say that those deep, mysterious, profound soul connections, that's more of an, of an eighth house sort of thing. Now, if you're like me and you're married to your twin flame, then these sort of dynamics of how the two of you will compromise and engage in the day-to-day -day and balance each other, that would be the seventh house but the characteristics of this sort of mystery of your journey together as twin flames, that would be more revealed in your eighth house, okay? A lot of people know our first house, and the first house is the house of the ascendant. And if you know what that is all about, then you'll know that typically in astrology, people say the ascendant is the face that you wear to the world. It's how other people see you. My ascendant is Virgo, okay? Just as an example, my ascendant is Virgo. So according to that, belief, then a lot of you would see the Virgo qualities within me. You might see me as somebody who has a lot of information, somebody who is organized, someone who knows a lot about health, somebody who's very service oriented, very helpful, that type of thing. My seventh house sign though is the sign that's opposite of that. So whereas an, upon initial impression, especially if you're meeting like a stranger, the foot that you put forward is often the sign of your of your first house, right? But as people get to know you deeper, and as you get to know yourself deeper, you'll start to realize that that sign of your first house, that isn't really who you are. When you dig deeper, within yourself, if you're digging deeper within yourself. Now, some people don't, like, and some people live sort of um, a superficial life their whole life. These people may never really see the characteristics of their seventh house within themselves. But for those of us that are seekers and those of us that are trying to dig deep and understand ourselves, we'll find that our inner world is very, very, very much colored by the sign and the energy of the sign that is within our seventh house or our seventh house ruler. So what I wanna do is I wanna cover now five things to know about your seventh house. The seventh house shows us how we see others. It is the first relational house in astrology. And when I think back to my own life, right, my seventh house sign, again, is Pisces. I remember when I was younger, I never saw any of the Pisces qualities within myself. Not at all. I saw myself as someone just highly organized, highly goal oriented, super, super productive, always needing to be busy. And I was, you know, when I was younger. And a lot of people say it's only really after like the Saturn return or, you know, age 28, 29, 30 or so that we start to like really activate our seventh house. That's been true for me. That's definitely been true. Some people may be more advanced than that and activate it sooner. So if you're a young person and you're watching this, give it a try. Um, but it probably will really start to kick in around age 30. So I remember there used to be this feature on Facebook and I don't know if it's still there, 
but um, it was just one of those apps and it would show you like the astrological signs of your friends. And I remember at one point in time in college that I sort of used that application and like 70% of my Facebook friends were Pisces, which is the sign that rules my seventh house. So all these people that I had as friends, these one-on-one -on -one relationships, I was attracting to myself a lot of Pisces individuals. Now it doesn't always mean that, say that Leo rules your seventh house, it doesn't mean that like every single one of your friends is gonna be a Leo, but what it means is that you'll often see, right, those Leo qualities in others. And the reason why this is important is because I think we need to understand that oftentimes the sign that is ruling our seventh house is what we are projecting onto other people, okay? Now, it may be that those people are very strong in that particular quality, or it may be that that is what we are sort of fixated on because our seventh house is almost like what we, it's like our balance point to how we see ourselves, right? It's actually like, in some ways, like our shadow, right? It's like what, it's that contrast that we need to understand who we are. So it was actually at the time in my life when I was most like fully crazed by the Virgo energy, you guys, I really was. Like I actually at one point in time was like the president of 15 service organizations, which is crazy. I have no idea how I did that. That was nuts. Don't do that. I don't recommend anybody do that, okay? But I was, because I was like so tied to that Virgo identity. And that's when I attracted the most Pisces people to myself. And I remember thinking like, gosh, you know, everybody around me, they're all these like sensitive, dreamy, like artist types. And they literally were like, especially the people that I attracted for dating. You know, they're these quiet, dreamy types. They're not doing anything. <laughs> they're never doing anything. They're not productive. They don't have any goals, you know, they're just, I don't know, they're tapped into something else. And I secretly, like, I would get kind of frustrated at them because they were always able to relax, you know? And I was never able to do that. In one sense, I was like really drawn to people that were exhibiting that Pisces characteristic, the sign of my seventh house. In another sense though, I didn't understand them and I was also really frustrated by them. And I wondered why can't they be more like me. And I think that a lot of us feel that way about that energy represented by the seventh house. So I'm going to go more specifically into how you might see others based on your seventh house sign, right? And again, you can look to the timestamps for that. Seventh house shows what we need to embrace or bring out within ourselves in order to achieve balance. Say your first house is ruled by Gemini. Okay, I love Gemini energy. So let's say you've got a Gemini ascendant. Your first house is Gemini. So, you know, you're like, your identity, like you're, you're a social butterfly and you are so curious and you love learning about all these different perspectives, okay? But like, what you need to bring in balance is maybe not necessarily just to um, always be like talking to people and chatting to people and hearing their opinion, but actually some of the Sagittarius qualities. So maybe it's actually to go within, to slow down, turn off all the electronics and begin to hear your inner voice. Or maybe instead of being open to all different perspectives, what you need is to, to balance you is to start to actually try to find, I know this might be hard for somebody with a Gemini ascendant, but to find the highest truth, you know, that sort of single truth, what is that? And if you have the Gemini ascendant, right, you might find that a lot of people, as an example, in your life may exhibit that Sagittarius quality where you've got all these sort of philosopher types, you know, maybe they come across to you as being like a little bit uppity, you know, and they're all these world travelers and stuff. And you're like, hey, you know, I'm just kind of having fun here down here at like the local bar or whatever, you know, with my friends here in my hometown. Why am I attracting all these people that are constantly going abroad, you know, to the Himalayas to meditate at the ashram or whatever, like you just like, you know, but it's actually 
that your soul is seeking to balance itself through the quality exhibited by your seventh house actively try to bring in that sign of your seventh house can help you to be more balanced and it will also help to balance out your relationships with others and this brings us to point three if you are having issues in your personal relationships you may find that it's actually really, really healing to sort of put on the thinking cap that corresponds with your seventh house sign and to start to approach your relationships a little bit more in that particular way. Um, and it will help you to find common ground and balance with the other people that are in your life. So for me, when I was, you know, very, very much in my Virgo energy, and when I get like that, my relationships don't really thrive, you know, because I get really nitpicky and I'm always, you know, kind of a little bit controlling and I'm not very spontaneous, you know, and I always need to plan everything and that doesn't really lead to like making memories, right? But when I start to like approach my relationships in a Pisces way and I'm just like trusting of the people that come to me and I kind of go with the flow and I nurture and support them and share my intuitive insights and just really just kind of let go and trust that the people that come into my life well, this brings up such good feelings for me because I this week I met such wonderful people that just came into my life. I just even just out and about, it was amazing. And I met them when I was just like totally silent, feeling just really dreamy, walking around, listening to music. And that's like a very Neptunian Pisces thing to do. And they just like came to me. And I magnetize these like beautiful people, just like vibrant and shining. So if you're struggling with your relationships, look to the sign of your seventh house and instead of like judging that sign because we can sometimes like when we're not fully um balanced within ourselves we can sometimes be very judgmental of people that exhibit the qualities of the sign of our seventh house that was very very much the case for me all the way until just now really like you know that's why i'm making this video like all the way until just really recently it, for me my seventh house really did activate at like my 30th birthday i did get married a little bit before that i got married just a couple days before my 29th birthday and so in a way i started to open up my seventh house at that time if you are struggling you've got to start to see the light of the sign of your seventh house and look for those quality those qualities and characteristics start to value those quality and characteristics start to bring out those quality and characteristics in yourself acknowledge that they are within you okay because the seventh house qualities it's often the case that other people will see those qualities within us like a lot of you guys it may not be coming across right now so much i don't know maybe it is but like a lot of you guys probably would have and did and have for a long time seen the pisces qualities within me right and i can remember like you know pisces the sign of my seventh house is known for being very, very creative and very, very psychic. I never understood why people called me those things growing up. My husband, Zaire, he likes to get about like two readings a year. And I like to get like one reading a year just for fun, like as sort of a recreational activity. The first couple of years that we were together, he would get these readings and he would never tell the psychics anything and they would always say, oh, I see you with this like, beautiful, imaginative, intuitive, super creative young woman. You guys are such a great couple. And the first time that he told me that, I was like mad. I was like, oh my God, like, are we going to break up? Because that's not me. It happened again, like three more times. And on the third time, I was like, that is me. <laughs> like, hold on a second. Like, actually, I do think that they're describing me. Maybe I am those things, you know? And that's when I started to see my seventh house. So just realize that the sign that's there, it may not be like 
that first sort of punch that you put forth, right? When you meet somebody like, or I feel like the first house is like our comfort zone. Like if I'm really, really uncomfortable and I'm like meeting new people, like, yes, I'm going to put forth like my Virgo quality. And I think that's why it came up a lot, like in college, because in college you're always meeting new people. And especially like, since I was a leader, it's like, I'm always meeting all these different people and I'm always like doing these icebreakers and stuff. And then it, I would just like, boom, like put my Virgo foot forward. And as you like relax into relationship and deepen relationships, that's where I think that, that, that characteristic of the seventh house, you'll start to feel like a yearning for it. This seventh house will reveal, not necessarily the sun sign of your marriage partner, business partner, best friend, but it will reveal the qualities that you're sort of drawn to in that person. Now, sometimes we're drawn to things that we don't understand. Maybe we don't even necessarily like those qualities, and yet, like, we're magnetized to them like we just know that we want a partner that has those qualities. I remember making this list. This is a very Virgo thing to do. Virgo is also my south node, not just my my first house. I made this list like nine pages long when I was 20 years old of qualities that I wanted in my perfect partner. And like the very first thing on the list was um, an empath that I wanted this person to be an empath. And then like it proceeded to be like empath, like highly sensitive, kind and nurturing. And like, it was like nine pages of qualities describing the sign of Pisces, even though I didn't know anything about astrology at that time. So I was like just describing my seventh house. And it's funny, like my husband is not a Pisces, but he has a Pisces stellium. Okay, so he has a stellium that falls into my seventh house and his south node, so who he was up to age 30 and in his past lives is in the 12th house, which is ruled by Pisces. He's very, very strong in the Pisces energy and his sun sign is Aries. Our suns are conjunct. Um, I'm an Aries as well, but his moon sign is Pisces. Actually, our moons are conjunct too. Um, but anyway, if you were just to meet him and spend time with him, if you saw him in his most relaxed state, you could easily think that he was a Pisces. In his chart, you'll see that uh, his seventh house is ruled by Gemini. He's got a Gemini seventh house. Like I get to meet a lot of intuitive professionals in my life, like especially when I do like psychic fairs or in-person readings and stuff like that. And every time I meet an astrologer, I always go, hey, guess my sign. And they always say, Maya, you're a Gemini. <laughs> like like 100% of the time, like you're a Gemini, you're a Gemini. So um, I wish I was. I wish that I was. Gemini is my Jupiter sign, and yeah, I have a yad pointing to Gemini. Um, it's my midheaven, so a lot of you may see the Gemini quality shining forth within me uh, when I'm here on YouTube. I love Gemini. Love me some Gemini. In relationship, in one-on-one -on -one relationships, especially with my husband, Zaya, right? my Gemini really comes out. Like it really comes out. I'm always so chatty and I'm always like, have you thought of this? Have you thought of this? Like and sharing ideas and like my social quality comes out and it just, so to him, I'm a Gemini. I always notice like whenever he talks about people that he likes, <laughs> it, like that he meets at work or whatever that he likes, he's always like, oh yeah, you know, like I met this new colleague and She's really smart, like really smart, really talkative and social. And that's what he likes about people. And that's the sign ruling his seventh house. So if you're looking for somebody to date, it's not a bad idea. Like if you're using Tinder or something like that, I don't recommend Tinder, you guys, but I met my husband on eHarmony. But anyway, so um, that was a while ago though. But like if you're using uh, Bumble or something like that, um, then right, it might be a good idea to consider dating people who have the sign of your seventh house or who exhibit those qualities really strong. If you're looking for a business partner, same thing. Or even if you're looking for a pet. The seventh house would be your enemies or it would show, I don't want to talk too much about that, but it would show the qualities of enemies or people that are against you in your life. And so 
I will say there that does ring a little bit true for me in the sense that luckily I don't feel that I've had like too many enemies in my life but when I have and when I know that people have been acting against me they're always doing it in these mysterious spiritual ways you know I did have one open enemy they accused me of witchcraft that's right yes and so and, and that was actually just very unfortunate let's say you had capricorn ruling your seventh house or something like that and let's say you also had like some all planets are good and i love saturn and pluto okay but like let's say you had some malefic planets there and let's say it was like saturn pluto you know and mars okay and they're all there in your seventh house of capricorn well in that case it may be the case that people in positions of authority like your boss or um the government like you may have en some enemies in those places right and so just being mindful of that and now what i want to do is I want to share some more specifics based on the access of your seventh house. So basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about the opposing signs. So your what you want to look for is like, let's say your seventh house is ruled by Libra. You want to look for the time that says Aries Libra. So we're going to cover Aries Libra, Taurus Scorpio, Gemini and Sag, Cancer Capricorn, Leo Aquarius, and Virgo Pisces in that order. So let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so the first access is Aries Libra. So if Aries is the ruler of your first house, you probably see yourself as this like independent, courageous, confident, sort of go-getter who's maybe a little bit like competitive, but ultimately is just a pioneer and a leader and you probably see yourself as being somebody who's fit and just you know just somebody who just really understands themselves you know and likes who you are and you're just vital and yes okay you probably see yourself that way but then you probably see the other people in your life right and you probably think why are all these people like so needy you know like i'm always attracting these people to me who have these sort of complicated love lives why can't they just be satisfied being on their own you know they're all so indecisive and they're all so like they're they're constantly sacrificing their own identity to please others they're so easily influenced by other people and they're all so flirtatious can't they just have fun on their own like me right so that's just an example but if it's the reverse right let's say you have the libra ascendant in that case you probably see yourself as like this very diplomatic person who's very peaceful and very good at and you probably really are like very good at keeping harmony amongst your friends and your family members and you're probably like really beautiful and really good at doing your hair and makeup and you're loving and you're kind and everywhere you go you make it a little bit more beautiful with your energy and your gifts and you're just so a very considerate person and you're probably like why am i attracted to myself all these people who are so damn selfish with these tempers that are like crazy and impulsive and they don't think of other people's needs and they just you know say whatever comes to mind and they you know they don't care like i i am you know somebody who has these wonderful relationships with my friends and stuff and i'm attracting these people who could really care less they're they're fine just being on their own why am i always drawing these people to me and they're so impatient and they're causing a ruckus and they're trying to compete with me but i don't want to compete i want to just get along okay so that's that's an example of the aries libra access but if you want to come into balance and you have say the aries ascendant if you just gently lean into the libra qualities then that will really help you with, in your relationship with yourself. It'll help you to better understand yourself as a holistic being and it will help improve your relationships. Now let's talk about the Taurus Scorpio axis. I love these energies, okay? So if you have the 
Taurus ascendant, you probably see yourself as somebody who's very grounded, you know, someone who's stable and practical. You're probably very consistent and loyal to those that you care about. You probably see yourself as being somebody who has very good taste. You know, maybe you like the finer things in life, but you, you know where to invest your money. You're very good with money. You probably see yourself as being very down to earth, a little bit sensuous, and maybe you like a little bit of a slower pace in life, but you know that slow and steady wins the race, okay? So like, <laughs> maybe those are some of the things that you see in yourself, but then maybe with your Taurus Ascendant, you're attracting to yourself a whole bunch of people that have this like dark quality about them. Maybe they even have, maybe they actually have dark features, you know? And they're kind of manipulative. You're looking for loyal partners, you know, straight shooters, but you got all these people coming into your life. Who, they have all these like secrets and they're a little bit seedy and they're also very sexual. And you wonder if they might be using that to manipulate you or others. And they can get very, very jealous and possessive and intense and maybe even obsessive, right? Okay, so that's if you, that's if you have the Taurus Ascendant and um, Scorpio ruled seventh house. Now, on the reverse side, if you have the Scorpio Ascendant, um, you probably see yourself as this person who is magical, and you probably are magical. You probably see yourself as being, yeah, a little bit intense, but also very, very magnetic. You probably see yourself as somebody who sort of understands psychology and who can peer into other people, but you probably keep that a secret because you like to be a little bit mysterious and sexy. And you probably see yourself as somebody who is powerful. Um, and yeah, that's how you see yourself, but you feel like you're drawing to all of yourself, all these people who are slow. You like to kind of take risks. You like to maybe even rush into things sometimes, but you're drawing to yourself like these people that like to observe for a little while before they jump into a relationship with you. They may be a little bit stubborn, whereas you may see in yourself somebody who now you actually probably are exhibiting some of these qualities yourself, but you're not seeing it, right? Like, so you're drawing to yourself people who are you know, a little bit stubborn. They're not wanting to compromise. They're, maybe they're even possessive, like of some of their um, things and they don't want to share with you, but you are a natural sharer, right? Um, and they may even be resentful and inflexible. You may see yourself as somebody who likes change, you know, and likes risk. And you're drawing to yourself these people who are risk averse. So if you start to bring out some of the more Taurus qualities, if you become a little bit more practical <laughs> within yourself or you observe that you already are actually practical and you are consistent and you have that quality as well of valuing the material and these sorts of things and you bring out that Taurus quality within you, it will help you to improve your relationship with yourself and others and vice versa. So for the Taurus descendant people, if you bring out that Scorpio quality within yourself, if you become a little bit more mysterious, if you take some more risks, if you work with your magic powers, right? And you study your psychology and things like that, you'll actually come to improve your relationship with yourself and others. <laughs>
they believe that they know what's true and they know the right way and they might be a little frank with you. You're always very open-minded and willing to listen to anything, but they're constantly telling you how it is and you may not really want to hear that because you like to hear all different sorts of views. And you may be drawing to yourself all these people who are... Um, seeking out adventure all the time. You might want to hang out and, you know, introduce these people to your childhood friends and just go down the block to your favorite restaurant. But they're always like, no, come on, let's get on a plane and fly to Australia or something. <laughs> like, So you're drawing to yourself people like that. And if it's the reverse, right, if you have this Sagittarius ascendant, you probably see yourself as being somebody who's very philosophical and wise and on a quest, on a journey for something more. And you probably see yourself as somebody who loves to be free and who is very honest and optimistic and who is maybe very cultured, maybe a world traveler. You're, maybe these are the qualities that you put forth, but you're constantly drawing to yourself these people who are, won't shut up, <laughs> that we're talking all the time, right? Talking all the time, asking you all these questions, who are very two-faced, you know? They maybe pretend to believe what you believe when you're together, but then you see them walk across the room and they say something else to the exact opposite thing to somebody else. And they're very scattered. They can never sit in one place. They're changing their mind all the time. And they're very mischievous. They're very mischievous. Um, and yeah, you're thinking, why am I drawing those people to me? And it's because with the Sag Ascendant, you need to bring out some of those qualities within yourself. It's okay not to always know the truth, right? Like it's okay not to have the answers. It's okay to open your mind and be curious, you know? And it's okay to like Gemini people maybe talk about things that don't matter. And maybe they just gossip and maybe they are satisfied by just asking, you know, hey, how are you? How was your weekend? And stuff like that. And maybe those types of conversations annoy you. But maybe if you had those types of conversations with others more, then your relationships would be better, stronger, more harmonious, okay? And, and the reverse, if you know, if you had the Gemini Ascendant, you know? So anyway, yeah, that's, that's Gemini and Sag. Cancer and Capricorn. <laughs> to me, these are like, woo, these are like some of the most opposing energies, you know? I don't know why, but I just feel that. It's like, I feel it within my being, the Cancer Capricorn. But anyway, so if you have the Cancer Ascendant, you probably see yourself as somebody who is sensitive, yes but in a good way, you know? You're kind and caring and you like to care for others, you like to nurture others. Um, you're somebody maybe who identifies a lot with your family or your culture. You probably see yourself as being somebody who is intuitive, um, probably even an empath. You probably come across that way to others at least. And you probably see yourself as somebody who's sympathetic to those who are suffering and somebody who dislikes conflict. And yet, you may draw to yourself people who are very... <laughs> maybe they come across as being very rigid. They come across as being very pessimistic or even fatalistic. They're always thinking of what can go wrong. You know, like what could go wrong? Um, they may be very controlling of you. You may draw to yourself people who are controlling of you, people who are blunt, you know, where you're always like really thinking about how other people are going to feel. These people are blunt and to the point. They're telling you how it is. And you may be drawing to you people who are like power hungry, like they are not content, like they are after something. They want to become somebody. You may be somebody who, you know, can really enjoy some time spent at home with your family. And you've got all these people coming to you who are trying to become the president, okay? And you may be very connected to your inner child. And you may be drawing to yourself, like even when you were young, you may be drawing to yourself these like little five-year-olds that are acting like they're 50, you know, like they're very grown up. If you have the reverse, if you have the Capricorn Ascendant, you probably see yourself as somebody who is responsible, 
yes, you're, you are, you're responsible. You probably come across as being very practical and um, ambitious. Yes, you have goals, you know, <laughs> you do. Um, and you know you're disciplined enough to be able to achieve them. You know, if you have the Capricorn Ascendant, maybe you enjoy like wearing a business suit. Uh, but you probably know that you're pretty economical, unless you, you may have some adverse aspects, but otherwise, like you see yourself as being good with resources, good with money. Um, you see yourself as somebody who's a natural manager or a natural boss who should be in a position of responsibility because you're dependable, you're loyal, and you can, you know, make goals a reality, right? So you may see yourself as that way, but you may be drawing to yourself. <laughs> All of these people who are moody, they are crybabies, they might be grown adults, but they're still completely attached to mom or dad, they are holding grudges, well, maybe they get offended by you, and they say they forgive you, but they constantly keep bringing it up again because they forgive, but they don't forget. And sometimes maybe you just want to straight talk with these people in your life, but they will not argue with you or if you try to, they cry, you know, and then they get all upset and you, you, you don't like that, right? And you may draw to yourself people who are, they may even be like so attached to things of emotional significance that you, that they actually are hoarders. Whereas you're trying to just organize the pantry and organize the closet and make it very fastidious. These people are holding on to everything. Okay. So in order to come into balance, if you have the Capricorn Ascendant, recognize that, you know what, you do have a sensitive side. You do have a side too that loves your family and wants to, you know, build a beautiful home and feel satisfied by that time. And you cry, you know, <laughs> you have emotions, you have a heart, you are intuitive as well. And the more that you bring out those qualities within yourself, the better your relationships will be. Okay, and if it's the reverse, if you have the Cancer Ascendant, listen, like, recognize that there is a part of you that wants to be the boss, you know? There is a part of you that wants to be the boss. There is a part of you that, you know, that wants to, especially in relationship, have goals, get somewhere, make it somewhere, you know, feel grounded, feel like an authority, that exists within you. And if you, if you embrace that, it will improve your relationships. Leo and Aquarius. So if you have the Leo Ascendant, you probably see yourself as being somebody who is creative. Maybe you're born to be a star, right? Maybe you are, you know, and gosh, you're very generous. You are affectionate. You are courageous. And yeah, you're talented and you know you can't help it that you're a little bit popular it's because you are so enthusiastic and you have such a flair <laughs> about you right so you may see yourself as that way and yet you may be drawing to yourself all these people who are weird like they're just very eccentric and you know you're so warm and <laughs> so generous and they're just distant they're just like cut off and they are always being so rebellious and they are detached from their emotions and they are these revolutionaries that you're drawing into your life and they're always sort of fighting for the little guy and they're always just trying to do things differently. Maybe, you know, you are interested in popular culture and you want to do what people like and love and then you're drawing to yourself all these people that that aren't that way, you know? They, uh, they don't want to see that, you know? They want to rebel just for the sake of rebellion, or at least that's how it seems. You are really something special, okay? Like, and you're drawing to yourself these people who don't even care about that. Like, they want to, they don't even want to be well liked. They want to be weird. Like, okay, so that may be how you feel. <laughs> Maybe, right? If you have the Aquarius Ascendant, you probably see yourself as somebody who is not weird, but somebody who is unique. You're unique and you're innovative and you're not detached. You're independent, you know? You are independent. And okay, 
you know, maybe you are a little bit of a rebel, but that's because society needs to change and dream bigger. And you probably have a lot of dreams, you know, and, um, but not the superficial kind, like all those people that you attract in your life, but the real kind, you know, for something more, you probably see yourself as a trendsetter and a humanitarian who is friendly and somebody to be maybe admired. And you probably feel like you are drawing to yourself these people who are so damn egocentric that are constantly, you know, showing off and can't handle their emotions. They are drama queens and they are very superficial. They don't know what really matters, you know, in the world and they're bossy and they're patronizing to you and they're judging to you and they've got way 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 too much pride if you have the aquarius ascendant understand that those leo qualities do live within you and you may not see them in your but other people see them in you and when you start to realize you do have those qualities in your inner world your relationships will start to heal you'll be less judgmental of other people and things will come into balance and vice versa. If you have the Leo ascendant, start to realize, you know what, maybe actually it's not everybody else that's so weird and that's insisting on being unique. Maybe you're doing that and you don't even realize that you are doing that. And maybe it's okay for you to be a little bit more detached some of the time. Maybe within you to find deep fulfillment, there's a part of you that wants to give away your talents and gifts in service to a much, much higher cause that wants to be a humanitarian. And if you lean in to that direction, your relationship with yourself and others will improve. Virgo and Pisces. <laughs> so this is my access in my chart as I talked about. If you have the Virgo ascendant, you probably see yourself as somebody who is modest, somebody who is reliable. You probably see yourself as somebody who is very hardworking. You may see yourself as somebody who is healthy or strongly identify with healthy routines, nutrition, stuff like that. You may see yourself as somebody whose identity is very closely tied to serving others. You're somebody who likes to serve others, who likes to help other people. You may see yourself as being detail-oriented, also very intelligent, or you probably wouldn't describe yourself as being very intelligent, but you'd say, you know, yeah, I've got a decent head on my shoulders <laughs> or something like that. You know, Virgo ascendant, not one to really brag, right? A little bit more modest, but yes, you're probably a smarty pants, right? So Virgo ascendant and then, you know, but you would see within other people, you're drawing to yourself these people who are vague AF, you know, these Pisces people. So you're very detail oriented, you're very specific and you're drawing these people that always are saying, I don't know. Like, what do you want to do today? I don't know. When do you want to leave? I don't care. <laughs> like these people are just like very vague. You may draw to yourself people that are trying to escape reality. You see yourself as somebody who knows how to work within reality. And you always are drawing to yourself these people that don't seem to care about what's going on in reality. They're just looking to escape through music or movies or you know through through uh, maybe even in the worst cases alcohol or drugs or things like that you may draw to yourself these people who don't have any boundaries they don't seem to have any boundaries and they seem kind of unproductive at least in comparison to you <laughs> and they may be overly sensitive you're drawing to yourself a lot of really sensitive type a lot of dreamers who are very kind yes they're very kind but they're not very practical and they may be overly sentimental like they may have very deep feelings about a lot of things but they're not really doing anything uh, to change the world they're not really doing anything with those feelings um so yeah so that's if you have the virgo ascendant but if you bring out some of those qualities within yourself if you realize you're very sensitive too it's not just everybody else that's around you you are within your heart and you are intuitive it's not just you know that you're seeing that in everybody else and maybe there's a part of you that also wants to escape reality maybe you're tired 
of the pressure that you put on yourself and you want to be like that and if you let yourself be a little bit more Pisces wonderful and magical things will happen in your life now if it's the reverse. So if you're somebody who has the Pisces ascendant, you probably see yourself as somebody who is intuitive, you know, and this is a wonderful quality about Pisces ascendant, who's intuitive, who is sympathetic. You may identify as being like an indigo or just an old soul, you know, who's compassionate and unselfish with a great imagination and some creativity, right? So you're seeing yourself in that way, but you may be drawing to yourself all these people who are so dang critical and who are constantly worrying all the time and overanalyzing and they're inflexible and they're type A's and they're judging you, you can tell. You love them anyway, but you know, please stop judging me, right? They're judging you and themselves and they're so hard on themselves and they're so hard on themselves and such perfectionists that they're walking around all the time with anxiety which you feel and which makes you nervous and they are constantly overbooked and they're sacrificing themselves and they are obsessed with their health and you can feel them judging you every time that you eat a cupcake or something like that right but if you get in touch with the part of yourself that actually does really want to have a little bit more strict of a plan <laughs> like and wants to follow some routines and maybe wants to be a little bit more healthy and you know focus on your nutrition and volunteer and be more productive if you get in touch with the, the part of yourself that actually your inner world you do yearn for those things that will help to balance your relationships and vice versa if you have the virgo ascendant it's time to get in touch with your intuition to learn to relax to learn to connect with the invisible right as much as the material world is here for us there is something more and to learn to accept that not everything can be analyzed some things are a mystery and some things are meant to remain a mystery and they cannot be figured out with the logical mind Thank you all for stopping by the Maya's Dream channel today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video that you requested. It has been wonderful to have you here. If you watched to the end, seriously, bless you. Thank you. You guys are amazing subscribers. And yes, I send my love to you. If you like this video, please feel free to come back any Friday for another new video here on the Maya's Dream channel. Comment below, let me know what sign rules your seventh house, and let me know if you have any other requests for astrology videos or any other videos that you would like to see. Just post them in the comments below. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. Many, many blessings to you, and namaste. Bye!